Lauren plays basketball with her friends. She makes 10 baskets. Each of these baskets is worth either two or three points. Lauren scores a total of 26 points. How many three-point baskets did she make? Her score will basically be two times the number of two-pointers plus three times the number of three-pointers, and that will equal 26. So basically, you're trying to find an integer solution to this question. So for example, if A was... Uh, uh, let's say if all of her baskets were two pointers it would be two times ten which is twenty points but we need twenty six so you just have to experiment that's that's all it is so after experimenting you will find that if you have say uh, four baskets that are two pointers that's eight points so then you have tw 26 minus 8 which is 18 so then 18 divided by 3 is 6. So if you have 6 baskets that are 3-pointers, that would add up to the 26. So that, that's all that is. And then the question is, how many 3-pointers did she make? Well, she made 6 of them, and therefore the answer is B. Glenn Howe, Iona, Julia, Carla, and Levi, Levi participated in the 2023 Canadian Team Math Contest on their team uniforms. Each had a different number. From the list, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. How and Julia's number were even. Carla's and L Levi's numbers were prime. Glenn's number was a perfect square. What is Iona's number? Okay. So G, H, I, J, K, and L. Okay, so the perfect square guy, there, only, there was only one perfect square in that list, and that's 16, so that's 16. Prime numbers, which are the prime? 11 and 13, right? So those belong to Carla and Levi. So... Carla and Levi, uh, 11 and 13. It doesn't really matter who gets what because in the end, we just want Iona's number. Figure 1 shows an arrangement of three lines with one intersection point, and figure 2 shows an arrangement of three lines with three intersection points. What is the maximum number of intersection points that can appear in an arrangement of four lines? One line, two line, three line and now we want the maximum right so we want our fourth line to go through each of these three lines so let's see if I can do that here like that so now let's count the intersection points one two three four five six so six looks like the maximum and therefore number 13 the answer is D the average mean of a list of numbers 10 numbers is 17 when one number is removed from the list, the new average is 16. What number was removed? So the sum of these uh, numbers would be 170, right? The mean times how, how many numbers there are. So we're removing some number, and then we're taking the average of the remaining nine numbers, and they're saying that's 16. So that's the equation based on what they've given us in the question. So that'd be 170 minus x is 9 times 16, which is 144, and therefore x would be 140, 170 minus 144, which is 26, and therefore that would be A. In triangle ABC, points D and E lie on AB as shown if AD is equal to D, E is equal to EB is equal to C, D is equal to C. What is the measure of angle ABC? So this is a classic uh, angle chasing but uh, probably one of the easier ones, so it's not so bad. Let me blow this up a little bit. So the DEC triangle, that's equilateral, so those are 60 degrees. And then that angle is going to be 180 minus 60, so that's 120. Now that angle and that angle are equal because that's an isosceles triangle, so 120 plus 2x is 180, and when you solve for that, you'll get x equal to 30. And then very similarly, that's also 120, and that's also going to be 30 and 30. So therefore, angle, what was the angle they wanted? ABC? That would be 30 degrees. And therefore, 30 degrees is A for number 15. The value of x over 2 is less than the value of x squared. The value of x squared is less than the value of x. Which of the following could be a value of x? So x over 2 is less than x squared, is less than x. So I just plug in, you know, the values that they gave us. So if it's 2, 
this looks like one and four and two. Now, does this hold true? No, it falls apart. Okay, so that's not right. Okay, let's try one third. So that would be one over six, one over nine, and one over three. Does that hold true? And uh, let me think here. One over six, is it less than one over nine? And the answer is no. So that falls apart. Okay, next one. Uh, three over four would be three over eight, uh, nine over 16, and three over four. So is this whole true? Well, if you're unsure, just convert it to decimals. It's easier when it's decimals. Uh, 0.56 and 0.75. And yeah, that does indeed hold true. So with a little bit of experimentation with the answer choices, you get C. The first two hours of Melanie's trip was spent traveling at 100 kilometers an hour. The remaining 200 kilometers of Melanie's trip was spent traveling 80 kilometers per hour. Melanie's average speed during this trip is closest to. So speed is equal to distance over time. And we've got uh, not drawn to scale, but in the first part, they tell me the speed is 100. And do they tell me anything else? That the first two hours. So there we go. We got a couple of pieces of information. Next part, they tell me the distance is 200, and they tell me the speed is 80. Now to get the average speed, we would need the speed since speed is equal to distance over time. To get the average speed, we would need the average time, or the total time, the total time over the total total distance over the total time. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so let's first figure out what is the total distance. With this part, it would be d is equal to s times t. So that would be 100 times 2. So that distance is 200. And then so we got the total distance. It's 200 plus 200. 200 from here, 200 from there. Now we need the total time. Here we have two hours, but here we'd have to calculate time. So time would be distance over speed. So that'd be 200 over 80, and that is uh, exactly 2.5, I believe. So the time is 2 hours plus 2.5. So that is 400 over 4.5, and that would be about 88.9. And the closest is 89, so that would be B. A numerical value is assigned to each of the letter of the alphabet. The value of a word is determined by adding up the numerical values of each of its letters. The value of SET is 2, value of HAT is 7, TASTE is 3, and MAT is 4. What is the value of MATH? So S plus E plus T apparently is 2. H plus A plus T is 7. T plus A plus S plus T plus E is 3. M plus A plus T is 4. And that's it. Okay, so we got to figure out MAT. Well, I think it looks like if I just figure out the numerical value of H, I just add it to this guy and then I'm done. Okay, so let's see what I can do here. Um, hmm. What can I do? If I take those two and I subtract them, it would be 7 minus 4, and then the, it would be H minus M. So that's my first piece of information. Now where can I go from here? If I take this guy and this guy and subtract them, S, E, and T appear there. So it would be T plus A would be 3 minus 2, which is 1. Correct? Yeah. T plus A. Okay, okay, I think I got it. So then I just take the MAT, since M plus A plus T is 4, and then T plus A is 1, this is 1, so it's M plus 1 is 4, so therefore M is 3. And then I just go right back to here, since M is 3, H minus 3 is equal to 3, and therefore H is 6. So H is 6, and then I can just add that, M plus A plus T plus H would be 4 plus 6, and that's 10. So that would be E.
In the diagram, triangle ABC has AB equal to BC equal to 3x plus 4, and AC is 2x, and rectangle DEFG has EF equal to 2x minus 2, and FG is 3x minus 1. Perimeter of ABC is equal to the perimeter of DEFG. What is the area of triangle ABC? So this is 3x plus 4, so let's see. Let's add them all up. So it'll be 3x plus 4 plus 3x plus 4 plus 2x. And then they're saying those perimeters are equal. So this is 3x minus 1. That's 2x minus 2 because that's a rectangle, right? So that'll be 2 times 2x minus 2 plus 2 times 3x minus 1. So that'd be 6x plus 8 plus 2x is equal to 4x minus 4 plus 6x minus 2. So that'd be 8x plus 8 is equal to 10x minus 6. So that means 2x is equal to 14x is equal to 7. Okay, so now we've got a double task, we've got another task here of figuring out the area of that rectangle and we can easily do that by dropping a perpendicular. So if you drop a perpendicular, call it H, then since that's 2x, that splits it up into x and x, and since x is 7, that base is 7 just from there to there. So we can use Pythagoras, x squared plus 7 squared is 3x plus 4 squared. So what, that's uh, 3 times 7 is 21, 21 plus 4 is 25, 25 squared. And then this can easily be calculated and you'll get h equal to 24. So therefore, the area is going to be 1 half base times height. The base is 2x, so that's 14. The height I just calculated is 24. And when you crunch out those numbers, you'll get 168. And therefore, that answer is c. If n is a positive integer between 1 million and 10 million inclusive, what is the maximum possible value for the sum of the digits of 25 times n? So n is between uh, 1 million and 10 million inclusive. So it includes the endpoints. And they are interested in 25n. Well, 25n looks like 25 million and 250 million, like that. And then they are saying, what is the maximum possible value for the sum of the digits of any number in that range? Okay, well, if we get a lot of nines, that will add a lot to the sum of the digits. So let's see. This number has a bunch of zeros, and the sum of the digits you can easily calculate is 7. That's way, way below any of the answer choices. So what if I go one number below this? It would be 2, 4, 9... 999999 that's a lot of nines and the sum of the digits of that number is 69 and 69 is indeed one of the answer choices but remember this is question number 20 and it should get a little suspicious to you if the answer seems too obvious right because this is too obvious it didn't really have to do any work it just went one blow so if it's too obvious then it's probably incorrect because it's question number 20. Now, if it was question number 2, then, you know, you can just circle the obvious answer and move on. Now, why does this fall apart? The reason is because n has to be an integer. So whatever you choose, when you divide it by 25, it should go back to being an integer. And what happens when you divide this number by 25, if you put that number over 25, it falls apart. It becomes some... It's not an integer. It's 999999999.96. Okay, so obviously that's no good. Okay, so I needed a, something divisible by 25. Now what about if I take this number and went 25 below it? Then that's guaranteed to be divisible by 25, and that number would be 2499999975, right? Because if I divide this number by 25... I will most definitely get an integer. In fact, what I do get is 9999999 when I divide by 25. Okay, that sounds like a reasonable uh, candidate. Now, if I add up the uh, sum of the digits of that, I get 63. Okay, that's an answer too. And that's uh, not as obvious, so you think, okay, Seems like a good choice. Can I get a better choice? Well, the answer is yes, you can. 
you've maxed out with these numbers and interestingly you've maxed out also with the last two numbers because the multiples of 25 would be like 75 50 25 and 0 0 and 7 and 5 are the la the, the largest in terms of the digits so really what you want to concentrate on is trying to maximize the sum of the digits of the first two right now you got a 2 and a 4 which is 6 but if I have a 9 in there that would be very helpful can I get a 9 for this number I can't because if you notice uh, the lowest that could be is 1 if it's a 0 then it actually is not even uh, a nine digit number anymore it dropped down to an eight digit number and then you get even less digits to work with so this first digit the lowest it could be is one but the second digit could be a nine and then I could have a whole bunch of nines and then of course the last two are gonna be seven five that as you can see with a little bit of um, analyzing is the number that gives the correct answer and when you add up the sum of the digits here, you'll get 67. And that is C. And another thing about this is that when you divide by 25, you will get an integer, which is what you need to get. So all that is what you need to do in order to get the correct answer, which is C.